Hello. I would like to welcome you to the West Seneca Our Schools program. During this segment, we would like to give you the opportunity to learn more about the Family and Consumer Science program in the West Seneca Schools. My name is Barbara Organisiak, and I've been a Family and Consumer Science teacher in West Seneca for the past 30 years. Now, you will remember these courses as home economics. But today, on both sides of town, on the east and west side of town, our students have the opportunity in the high schools to choose between eight family and consumer science courses in the areas of human development and parenting, foods and nutrition, and clothing and textiles, and housing design. In the middle school, students in 7th grade take home and career skills for 10 weeks and for 20 weeks in the 8th grade. One of the New York State standards for home and career skills requires that students be able to plan and prepare a nutritious meal for themselves and others. This involves being able to use the safety and sanitation rules, being able to use the tools and equipment to prepare the food, and knowing the food pyramid and the recommendations, and especially being familiar with the serving sizes of different foods. One of the things we do to accomplish this standard is we train the students to be nutritionists. And the students should be able to look at a list of food that someone has eaten and make recommendations based on their knowledge of the recommendations of the pyramid and their recommendations of serving sizes. The students really enjoy this activity and it, they're involved in teamwork and problem solving as, as they act as real nutritionists. As part of the new state standards, in alignment with these standards, our students need to learn a lot of home skills. These skills need to get them more independent and so prepare them for their future. Many of the careers that they will enter um, in the high school possibly already, they may get part-time jobs at fast food restaurants, and some of our students go on to being chefs and dietitians. So this could be a beginning or a start for these students. One very important uh, skill that we teach the students, whenever they're going to be working in a kitchen setting, they have to, of course, follow uh, all our health standards. They have to really be careful so that we have uh, a safe situation as far as food safety and, of course, even the safety with the equipment itself. All right, prior to doing this food lab, we have spent several days working on uh, the use, care, and safety of equipment and all different types of tools that the students will be using. Uh, we have learned how to read and follow a recipe accurately. Oftentimes our students have not done any kind of cooking at home or perhaps have prepared some things from box mix. So this is new for most all of our students, preparing a recipe from scratch. Uh, we of course explain how to accurately measure. They need to learn the difference between dry measures and liquid measures and how um, of course to use the liquid measuring cup at the counter by getting down to um, eye level and of course having it on a flat or level surface. And then just take this, you got to cut the seal. Not bag is spice. That's why it's in this very small container because it's strong. What we do ahead of time is read through that recipe, making sure that everyone is familiar with what has to be done. Uh, the students need to write up an entire list of utensils and all equipment needed for that recipe that they will prepare the next day. Our classroom, as you can see, is divided into four equal kitchens. And what we do, since the number of students is fairly large for the size of these kitchens, we divide them in half. And each kitchen has about three to four students working, preparing a recipe today. And then, of course, the other students who are sitting at the tables at this point, they're actually doing a lesson, or I should say a culmination of a lesson that we've been working with for the past week, which has to do with manners, table etiquette, and respect for all. Uh, the students have enjoyed doing this unit, and this paperwork that they're doing at their desk now is kind of a review and a tie-up of the whole um, mini unit. 
Another one of our state standards has to do with nutrition with our young teenagers. And we do quite a bit with this nutrition unit. One of the things we find is very important is serving sizes. Um, our students come to us knowing pretty much what the food pyramid is. They seem to learn about that in fifth or sixth grade. But when it comes to food serving sizes, they have very, very little knowledge of this. Uh, we explain to the students how sometimes people gain too much weight and they think they have, let's say, an average lunch, but when the students really see what the serving size is all about, they realize that one person who is overweight is eating way over the limit. Um, so we have many food models that we have purchased and what's nice about it is it looks exactly like food. The kids enjoy using them and it gives them a better idea of what a serving actually looks like. What we often do is we compare different things. For instance, a deck of cards is what we teach the kids is the size of a serving of the meat group. So if you were to have a piece of steak or a piece of chicken or fish, it should be about the size of a deck of cards. Uh, we also teach them that perhaps the top of a mayonnaise jar, that is about the size of an average hamburger. And the kids are really amazed when we, we make these comparisons. Uh, and we find that our kids really become more um, involved in, when they go home, more involved in helping mom prepare dinners now. Um, they actually tell their moms, well, gee, no, you know, if you're going to eat that entire submarine sandwich, that roll there is actually equal to four servings. And oftentimes people do not think about this. Eighth grade home and career skills also includes a career component. Over at West Middle School, Mrs. Barbara Donahue had her students present a career project. The students are given an assignment to research the career of their choice. For this project, the students must use the library to collect information about an individual career. The students collect information about what the person does on the job, about what kind of a person and what kind of characteristics a person must have to do this job, and how much money the person will make. They take the information that they have um, collected and they organize it into a visual that they present to the class and they dress up on the day of their presentation and they verbally present that information to the class. Now the class gets to see a variety of different careers and the students have just um, had experience with very important communication skills. I know you just heard um, a similar report yesterday from Mally, so probably all those questions were answered. You did a nice job. Oh, Jessica he has one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in the Marines, are like girls treated the same way as boys are? Or yeah. are they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember, sure. equal opportunity employer. Okay, just make sure. Anybody else? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, John. Now I'd like to take you for a little tour of our other home economics suite. In this room, of course, one of the main activities that the students are involved in is learning how to sew. And of course, we are not just trying to teach how to sew per se. We're trying to teach the students how to follow a direction sheet very carefully. Uh, we're taking the students with a project from the very start and they must complete it. Oftentimes they start things at home and never complete them. But here we insist that they do, and of course it gives them a real good feeling about themselves when they come out with a nice finished project. Uh, we start, of course, with learning about some of the basic parts and functions of the sewing machine. And to make our students feel more comfortable, we actually have them sew on paper at the machine itself. Now these are pre-printed printed sheets that we have, and it really teaches them how to control the speed of the machine, uh, how to make straight lines, how to do curves, pivots, etc. And this really is an excellent training for them before we actually start the Tuso kit. Now, what is a Tuso kit? Well, we have a variety of different projects that we allow the students to choose from, and they're basically a pillow. And what's nice about this kit is that it takes them right from the very beginnings of how to pin a pattern onto cloth, uh, understanding about the grain in fabric. They use the shears to cut them out, and we're even finding that a lot of our students have a very difficult time using a shears. Many of them coming from the elementary school have only used scissors, so of course this is a skill now that they need to acquire that they're getting a little bit older. 
Uh, then our students, of course, have a chance to thread the machines, and they do part of the pillow at the machine itself, but then we also teach them a lot of hand sewing skills so that they get both of the skills. Um, we also do an embroidery on the front of the project, and of course this is in preparation. I always tell the students someday they're going to be independent people out on their own and perhaps living in a dormitory at college or in their own apartment, and mom and dad are not going to be there to do all these things for them. So of course now our students feel comfortable that they would be able to uh, sew, let's say, a tear in a shirt or perhaps sew on a button or even hem a pair of pants. The directions that the students read and follow for this project are an example of technical writing, which overlaps with the English Department New York State Standards. The directions are also very similar to blueprints, and when the students read these blueprints, they practice a skill called spatial visualization, where they have to look at something in a two-dimensional form and visualize it in its three-dimensional form. And at the end, they have the opportunity to actually see how this form has been constructed. There is a little latch on this bobbin case, but you have to hold the bobbin case as though it were a glass of water that's right full to the top. Hold the bobbin case as though it's a glass of water and grab the latch on the bottom. Grab the latch that's on the bottom and hold that latch with your thumb and your index finger. Hold that latch. And that's how you should put this into the machine. Throughout this project, the students are developing listening skills because of the complicated nature of the equipment and the unfamiliarity of the project. Once the students leave the middle school and go up to the high school, they have the opportunity to choose from eight different courses in family and consumer science. One of the courses that they can take involves foods and nutrition. One of our first stops will be East Senior High School's Greenhouse Cafe. The family and consumer science teacher there, Mrs. Karen Keppel, transformed an unused greenhouse space into a cozy cafe. Teachers, staff members, and students may make reservations to have a relaxing gourmet lunch at the greenhouse cafe. The students in the three different levels of foods classes do a fantastic job planning the menus, preparing and serving the food at the cafe. Through these real life experiences in the restaurant business, they learn valuable lessons about responsibility, time management, organization, and communication. This has been in existence for the last three years. Um, I've been at the high school for four years now. I believe in the hands-on application of knowledge and um, we took this greenhouse that was housing dead plants and converted it into a little bistro. Um, we can seat 8 to 12 people at a seating and we're usually sold out just about every time. Um, the staff and students welcome the different uh, atmosphere and um, seem to be enjoying in the cuisine. All students um, will experience all levels of, of the restaurant work. Um, they apply for a job with a generic application during the Food Nutrition Core course and from then they try on every, every role in the restaurant experience um, from host or hostess, servers, executive chef, beverage chef, salad chef, dessert chef, uh, garnishy, final plate inspector, and uh, cleanup manager. So they, they get to experience all levels. Um, they all have to pitch in. If these students didn't give their all to this program, it couldn't exist. The menus are um, encouraged by the curriculum and whatever concept or technique I'm teaching, the students, they then plan a menu around that, demonstrating that they understand how to prepare food um, following those techniques. And then, of course, you know, bringing back some of the things that they've learned in the past for their side dishes and desserts and so on. And it also gives them a chance to expand on um, some of their creative abilities. Um, it, I can't have the cafe open um, any specific day because um, being on block scheduling, um, which we absolutely love, um, it does um, determine when we can actually serve the food. Um, but even if we you know, were to see the students every day, it still depends on the amount of time needed to teach the concept and then plan and um, decide what uh, new things we need to learn before we can actually present this menu. 
My pleasure is, comes from watching the students um, be proud of themselves as they come up with successful products. They select the menu, um, they put it all together, they advertise it, and um, they're so proud of themselves in the end, you know, when they have been successful. And the compliments are, are, are just amazing. Um, and they're just always so pleased, you know, with the, with the results. Um, you know, occasionally we have, we have something that doesn't turn out as well as others, and um, it's a learning experience. But my basic hope is that all students will learn good, safe practices in preparing food for themselves or in the, in the workplace. Um, I have a number of students that go on to higher level education in um, culinary. Um, I have students that are at Pennsylvania Culinary Arts Institute right now. I have students that um, have taken advantage of our articulation agreement that we have with Erie Community College. They have a wonderful food program. Um, and um, if they take all three classes and get an 85 or better, they gain credits at Erie Community for our articulation agreement. Um, the students have the right to, because I have observed them in all aspects of restaurant work in our small experience here, um, to come back and ask me for a reference. Um, I have restaurants from the area calling to um, ask for students to come apply for work, and um, they do respect the students that have been involved in the program. So um, I believe they're taking some great experience back with them either, as I said, for their own personal use or for the workforce. In the next segment of this program, we will feature a housing and environment class working on a design project with Mrs. Denise Oshai. As a culminating activity, I've assigned the students uh, a project to design their own room using a professional easy decorator uh, kit that we purchased last year. This particular class is very useful for um, any, any person at all that's going to be uh, decorating a home. Um, this actually meets their art requirement. New York State has an art requirement that the students need to fulfill before graduation, so this is one half of that art requirement. Um, it's applicable art in the home, but many of the students can identify that they've really enjoyed this and they have an aptitude for decorating and are really seriously looking into going into either architecture or interior decorating or interior designing. Start at the bottom with the pieces of furniture or the pieces of wall floor treatment that can't be removed and then as you keep going, you get bigger dimensions that come further out at you, such as the window treatments and the pictures that you want on the back walls. And then at the end, you add your furniture and anything that you want to stick out the furthest. After everything is done, you, the, final, the final project goes on here like this, and then you take a photocopy of it, and then you color in with the colors that you want, and then this is what the final project looks like. The three different foods classes at West's Senior High School are involved in a variety of activities combining their knowledge of food with community service. At Christmas time, the classes planned, prepared, and packaged boxes of cookies and candy that went to West Seneca families on the Christmas giving tree. We had to learn how to, do a micro, how to use a microwave to make fudge. Usually we don't do foods like that. Usually it's more of hands-on using the stove and using the oven. and. Uh, but using the microwave, we really haven't done it before, so it was a little different trying to make sure that we didn't burn the fudge in the microwave and to make sure that it came out in a good amount of time. And knowing that we're cooking for people that actually need this food, like we don't need it. I mean, we're fortunate that we have good schooling and good teachers and that we have a family to go home to and food that we can eat. And making this for the less fortunate makes, it, makes me feel a little bit better inside and I'm sure a lot of people too that's going to people that need the stuff. There is another favorite family and consumer science program at East Senior. For two weeks during each semester, the child psychology and parenting students transform the classroom into a nursery school. In choosing activities and interacting with children, 
the students have the opportunity to apply the principles of child development and psychology that they have learned. The students plan, prepare, and present activities and snacks and are totally responsible for the daily operation of an early childhood education center. Again, through this real life experience, students learn valuable lessons about responsibility, time management, organization, and communication. Some of the students involved in these classes may have younger brothers and sisters at home, and some of them may not. Going through these experiences help the students learn the ages and stages of children so that they will know what to expect and have a greater understanding of children and what the children need to develop to their fullest potential. Put paint on your hand and stick it right there, and then you can color some pictures. At West Senior High School, the child psychology and parenting classes had a guest speaker. A new mom came in to talk about childbirth, pregnancy, uh, child rearing, and the responsibilities of parenting. The special guest for the day was a newborn baby. In the human development classes, the Life Map project bridges the generation gap because students choose a senior citizen to interview. Most often they choose a grandparent. The students interview the person they have chosen about the different stages of their lives and they discuss significant life experiences. Many times it may be about World War II. I lost a brother in World War II. He was 19 years old. I had to another brother missing in the South Pacific. He turned up all right. Then I had another brother in England in World War II. Uh, to me, that was uh, World War II is the most horrible war that I think I ever lived through. That, to me, well, you're still... Oh, yeah, she has something for you. Oh. Family and consumer science courses involve hands-on, real-life experiences. Students take pride in tackling and following through on tasks that are difficult and sometimes tiring, but always meaningful. I feel that in family and consumer science courses, students are excited by the sense of their own accomplishment. I hope that students will leave these courses with the confidence and skills that they'll need to be successful members in the community. Thank you for watching this episode of Our Schools. I hope that you learned a little bit more about the Family and Consumer Science curriculum.